Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Say Like It Is with your boy Franklin. Today, we'll be talking about how to own a land in Nigeria. Owning a piece of land is a fantastic idea. It serves as an asset, serves as investment. So you can do, what can you do with a piece of land in Nigeria? You can possibly build a property on a you know, place to live in. Uh, you can possibly develop, a, turn it to a commercial premises, maybe build a, like a shopping complex or a petrol station, depending on the location of the land. You can maybe use it for farming and the list goes on. Okay, but the premise of this video is for me to, or for us to basically look into a checklist of things that you need to be mindful of in order to make sure that in buying a piece of land or more than a piece of land, you have confidence, you're, it's headache free, you don't have to worry about any ups and downs in the near future. The number one thing to look at is your budget. Budget links to uh, location, so I'll be talking about both at the same time. So, um, the location of um, a land of interest um, is pretty much tied to, you know, how you can get to spend your budget. So say for example, you have a millionaire to spend on a piece of land, it's very important to give consideration to the location of that land. So say in Ibadan, for example, in a part of Ibadan, you would like to own a plot of land. So you then have to look at what the price is in that location. So then you can look to see if your budget, you might go to a particular area and a plot of land is maybe two million, for example. So if you've got a budget of a million, you definitely can't fit into that area, all right? So budget is a very important thing. Now, the next point is, it's very important to request for landowners' documentations. Now, this point is very important. There are four important documents that you need to request from a you know, potential seller of a piece of land. One, certificate of occupancy, known as C of O. Uh, two, a survey plan. Three, tax clearance certificate. Four, deed of assignment. Now, um, here's my advice. It's very, very important that you do not become emotional when you're buying a piece of land. Don't add sentiments. Don't use family ties to buy a piece of land. Please don't. This is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. Oh, oh, the person selling this is my mom's friend. Oh, he's from my dad's church. Oh, um, I know their family. I've known them for 30 years. It's irrelevant. Do your checks carry out necessary verifications, it's very important. In order for you to verify the, uh, the authenticity of those documents from the potential you know, seller of the land, it's, it's very important that you get professionals involved, people like you know, estate agents or uh, people that deal with the sale of land, experts in that field that can thoroughly carry out verifications. Okay, the next point, it's very important that you get professionals involved to verify the authenticity of a piece of land. I cannot stress this point enough. So many people buy lands on face value. Oh, he said, she said, they said. And at the end of the day, you end up biting your fingertip because mo most people, you might buy a piece of land and you realize later on that, you know, it's fake or it's got other issues or you shouldn't have paid for it or, you know, it's got markings on it by the government and so I'm gonna get to those points as we go on. So the next one is ask questions. It, again, all of these things, these points are interrelated. Ask questions. Don't be emotive. Don't apply sentiments. I cannot stress it enough. Ask questions. So I'm the guy that wants to sell you a piece of land. Okay, fair enough. You've known Franklin for five, six years. We're good friends. Should that be a reason for you to just part with your hard-earned money? No, no. And it, should not, it shouldn't be a reason for me as a potential seller of the land to be, uh, take it personally or be angry just because you want to carry out your checks? No, that's why I said no sentiments. Don't use the scale of your friendship with someone or family ties as a judging or deciding factor. No, don't do that. Because sometimes people conceal information, they will mislead you in exchange for cash. Um, the next point, inspection of the land. It's very important because when you do get to where the piece of land is, you might make certain observations that would then affect your judgment in going forward. You might get to a piece of land and, and there is a sign that says, this land is not for sale. This land must not be sold. Beware of you know dodgy people, blah, 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 blah. Or um, if this land is advertised to you, call this number, we're not selling this number. So you might see a piece of information on that land that 
if you ring a number or contact someone else, it might open a can of worms and save you from losing money and all that stuff, okay? So it's very important to carry out inspection of that piece of land and also it lets you know if there are any boundaries, if there's anything you need to be aware of in that jurisdiction, if there is anything you need to bear in mind, the location, you know, if there are any roads, is there any government project going on in that area, it's very, very important. Now, one of the very important checks, this is why it's very vital that you get professionals involved, okay? One of the major problems or very common problems is you might go through a source and somebody, oh yeah, 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 I know this person, that person, you buy a piece of land, okay? If that land is marked as government acquisition, right? If basically, if that piece of land belongs to the government and you pay for it, not carrying out proper checks because it's a registered surveyor, right? Can check with the land registry, can check with their you know, software, and they can tell if a land is a government acquisition. So government acquisition basically is a no-go area. It's been known for people to unscrupulously try to sell government properties and, you know, and obtain money uh, via unscrupulous means from people and mislead you. Five years, 10 years down the line, the government might come knocking and say, we want the land. It doesn't matter if you've spent about 20 million or 10 million or 15 million building a fantastic commercial or private premises or a private property on it, the government have got the power to revoke, um, you know, the land because it belongs to them, okay? So please, like I said, don't apply emotions. Don't just take people's verbal, um, you know, um, verbal ev evidences or because what you find is usually when people are selling lands and you're trying to buy land, there's a lot of people in, they call them middle men. They are simply laser focused on their so-called commissions. There's so many lies, so many filthy outcomes that you know end up disappointing people. Because a lot of these people, some of them might even be a close relative. Because the guy knows if you buy a land for two million, or maybe he's gonna get 20% or 15% commission, the guy or the lady on, is only interested, and this happens to people all the time. This is why it's very important you carry out your check. Make sure that every payment do you know if you do bank transactions receipts and invoices you keep proofs of them make sure you have witnesses present if you if you can record them make sure you have people present have original copies of receipts get everything signed get lawyers involved do your checks do your checks they're very important and also additional costs that may possibly come up when you're buying a piece of land is paying for a survey plan it's very important Okay, because that allows you to lodge an official record of you know the land with the government. If if you don't already have a survey plan, you know coming from the seller, you might have to pay for a survey plan. The legal and agency fees, because if you're preparing like a, a land agreement and stuff, it's usually five or ten percent, you know, of the actual uh, fee, um, the value of the land and stuff. So these are additional costs, and then you may want to do like your CFO, which is certificate of occupancy and um, signing of documents. You know, in several jurisdictions across Nigeria, some people might want to take a bit of money because they're signing or acting as witnesses and stuff. So it's very important that you bear all of this in mind. Another thing to bear in mind is the issue of um, omonile, right? So you might be thinking, if you don't speak Yoruba, you might think, well, what does that mean? Well, it's very commonly linked to procurement of lands and stuff. You get these unscrupulous individuals, they are usually known as thugs, who like to extort people. So they might come there. They're, another better name for them is they're land grabbers, okay? They might come to a piece of land, and usually some of them might even have information. They know that this land has been sold to two, three, four, five people. You may not know. They will come, they will harass you. They might want to just maliciously take money off you and all that stuff. So again, get involved with professionals. Know what the rules are in what part of the country you're buying the land. Don't take things on face value. Don't just jump and make decisions. You know, take legal advice, okay? Protect yourself. Don't be confrontational with these people because some of them might get physically, you know, confrontational and aggressive and even attack you in exchange for some little change. When you don't give them money, they, they usually come with guns or, you know, um, knives or diabolical means and so, so you have to be very careful, okay? And um, troubled land. Troubled land is some lands might have ongoing legal disputes. This is this ties into doing your checks. Lawyers, 
and um, surveyors and you know licensed surveyors and also when you say surveyors if you're going to appoint a surveyor or if a friend or family recommends a surveyor make sure that you do your checks make sure to use a licensed surveyor there's so many unscrupulous people that say oh i'm a surveyor i can measure the land i can get you the dimensions i can do this i can do that they are liars the non-licensed surveyors they are known to file fake documents they will provide you with fake documents in exchange for your hard-earned money i've known people who are sitting on cfos and land related documents that are actually bogus documents they mean nothing then you find out three four five six years down the line and then you realize your land has been sold to someone else and then you spend money building properties you lose everything this is why you have to be very careful taking possession of your land it's advisable that as soon as you go through all the processes you've gone through the checklist you've procured your land make sure make sure that you quickly do your maybe your corner piece or a bit of a fence you know put something around it maybe a gate and stuff it's nice to have your own marker on the land you can put up a sign to say this land is not for sale because usually the land grabbers when they're going they go around snooping into lands and stuff it's, if a piece of land is left unattended there is no marker there is nothing it's just bushy appears to be abandoned it gives them that you know opportunity to be able to tap into it and carry out unscrupulous actions and what is your unscrupulous action they pretty much land grab as the name says they will steal it they can go and falsify documentation ask questions request original documents the moment a buyer is trying to um yeah don't worry about that ah yeah no 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 it's okay um you don't, we don't have the documents here but don't worry about it. nah walk away okay that's me done it's your boy franklin hit the like button hit the subscribe button show your love check my playlist and yeah that's the end of the episode um for this one and um yeah i'll see you in the next one it's your boy franklin peace and love bye